In Ghost in the Shell, a character states that due to advancements in technology, his daughter was able to learn fluent French in a matter of mere seconds. Invest now, because Duolingo is about to become incredible. <laughs> Ghost in the Shell is a Hollywood live action reimagine of the classic and extremely influential 1995 anime of the same name. I have seen that anime, but we're talking, I mean, probably well over 15 years ago, so I don't really remember much of it at all, apart from a few fragments that came back to me as I was watching this. So the original Ghost in the Shell anime doesn't really hold any kind of special place in my mind, whereas I know it's a huge deal for a lot of people and that's where a lot of the negativity surrounding this film is coming from. With that being said, let's get into my thoughts on the 2017 version. This is set in the future where humans enhancing themselves with cybernetics has become ubiquitous. With the help of a company called Hanka Robotics, people enhance almost every part of themselves. Their eyes, their intelligence, even entire limbs. But my favourite has got to be the guy who proudly announces he got himself a bionic liver so he can drink more. Like, hell yeah! Yeah, dude, that's what I'm talking about. That's a man after my own heart. That's a man after my own liver. Then comes along Mira, also known as Major, further blood in the line between human and otherwise. She's the first of her kind, a human brain recovered from a deadly terror attack and transplanted into a fully mechanical body. Almost like a ghost. A ghost in a... a body. She then spends her time doing what anyone would do in that situation up some terrorists for the government, but when a mysterious cyber terrorist starts hacking minds and killing senior scientists, it's up to Major and her team to track them down and in the process learn about her past she yearns to remember. First off, the best thing about this movie without a doubt is the visuals. The cinematography and the production design is unbelievable. It's brilliantly inventive and it really looks like a vibrant anime come to life. All the huge hologram adverts and sci-fi landscapes are pure eye candy, not to mention some fantastic practical robotics effects from Weta Workshop. Director Rupert Sanders along with his DP Jess Hall do some great world building and the action set pieces are excellent. I can see how the original anime has influenced so much and permeated just about every sci-fi since. It felt very matrixy and afterwards I was looking into it and it turns out the Wachowskis did take it to their producers and said we want to make that for real. Well now we do have it for real at least on a visual level and it looks Beautiful. I found the characters quite compelling, especially Major. Scarlett Johansson plays up with a sort of flat-footed stoop, as if her internal struggles literally weigh her down. That sounds weird, I know, but what I'm saying is she was very good, regardless of all the controversy surrounding her casting. It felt human, but also suitably mechanical, which is exactly what this character should have been. It felt like a cross between her characters in Lucy and Under the Skin. Believable is both a formidable agent and is someone just lost in their own body, wanting to better understand Themselves. It's name butchering time because also included in the cast are Pilu Azbek, Juliette Binoche, and Michael Pitt. These were actually all interesting characters that held my attention throughout, especially Pitt's sort of deformed robot dude talking like he's been DJ'd all the time, like more will d d die. But more importantly, the relationships between them and Major felt authentic. However, the pacing of this film leaves a lot to be desired. It really slows down at points, not least of which is whenever the CEO of Hanka Robotics, Cutter, is on screen. He has to be one of the most boring 2D antagonists I've seen for some time. I think this comes as a result of the much slimmed down storyline. As I said, I don't really remember the original anime, so I'm just going off what I've researched online since seeing the film, but it seems they've drastically simplified the story and the themes explored. I can see why the filmmakers would want to simplify or at least streamline the plot to widen its mass appeal. The problem with doing that though is that unless you do it really well, it can get boring. And that's exactly what's happened here. For all its stunning visuals and competent action, it just lacks on a story level. But let's address the elephant in the room. The very white non-Japanese Scarlett Johansson shaped elephant. From the moment Scarlett Johansson was announced in the role of the presumably Japanese lead character, this film has become inseparable from talks about whitewashing and racism in Hollywood. I can imagine the day they announced it, every social justice warrior and BuzzFeed employee was sitting there like, Ah, we seem to be raging about something I don't understand! I think people are very right to be angry, but their anger is pointed in the wrong direction. Does it suck that Scarlett Johansson was cast in a big role that ideally would have went to an Asian actress? Yeah, absolutely. Is there a problem with underrepresentation of minorities in filmmaking, especially Hollywood? Unquestionably, and it needs to change. But here's the thing, it's not Scarlett Johansson's fault, it's not any of the filmmakers' fault, hell, it's not even the studio's fault. The fault lies in this broken system 
that dominates filmmaking these days with the big get bigger and everything else gets smaller. We live in a world where the only thing that matters to financiers and people who have the power to get movies made is money. They don't care about originality or scripts or dedication to source material or telling powerful stories. The only thing they care about is making money. And with films seemingly making less and less money every year, you can bet that the film industry is increasingly going to play things safe. And with a risky, high concept property like Ghost in the Shell with sci-fi elements and robots and shit, that means casting a huge global star like Scarlett Johansson. The question that seems to be asked the most is, why couldn't they hire an Asian actress? And the answer is depressingly simple. There are just no A-list Asian actresses that can draw in a crowd. With the way a distribution system works and all the metrics they're based on etc, there are maybe only four or five actresses that can get your movie made regardless of the property and one of them is Scarlett Johansson. To put it simply, it may not be ideal but without Scarlett Johansson, Ghost in the Shell doesn't happen at all. I can't imagine this film was made on a budget of less than 100 million and if you cast people like Karen Fukuhara or Rinko Kikuchi, which are two names that I've seen suggested the most, you get maybe a third of the budget, if anything. And there's just no way a film like this can be produced on that small of a budget. But also something I'd legitimately like to hear your opinion on in the comments is if you take the exact same film with the exact same screenplay, the exact same direction, the exact same visuals and the exact same performances from supporting actors but swap out Scarlett Johansson for an Asian actress, does that actually make the film any better? It might make it more faithful to the source material but I honestly don't believe it would have an impact on the film itself. But the sad thing is it would definitely have an impact on how many people choose to see the film. The way I see it, this is a fictional story about a human brain and a robotic body. The ethnicity of that robot is the least of its problems. The search for identity does play into the story and her feeling a disconnect between her mind and her body is the key story arc so I can't really discuss it without getting into spoilers but it is there. Is it insensitive? and probably not a great decision all round. Most likely, but it's also a hell of a lot better than when they wanted to use CG to make white actors look Asian. Everyone involved with Ghost in the Shell was just doing the best that they could have done with the way the current system worked and you can't blame any one person, especially Scarlett Johansson. She was reportedly paid 10 million dollars to take on the role of Major and you can't blame her for taking that size of a paycheck. Hell, if I was offered 10 million dollars I'd take a stab at playing Nelson Mandela. It is crap that there are no big Asian stars that could be used in a film like this when there should be, but money talks so if you don't like the way things are don't buy a ticket for films like Ghost in the Shell or Transformers 5 or Pirates of the Caribbean a million. Go to the smaller independent cinemas and see films like Get Out, The Salesman, The Age of Shadows or I Am Not Your Negro which are all currently playing. So in the end as long as you don't mind watching an entire culture being thrown under the bus the Ghost in the Shell not that bad. It's just not that great either. It's poorly paced but solidly entertaining and it's saved by an excellent score and incredible visuals. I imagine for fans of the original anime it's kind of like trying to get authentic Asian street food at the all you can eat Chinese buffet. Like, the essence of it's there but what the fuck. I'm giving Ghost in the Shell 3 Buzzfeeds out of 5. Thanks very much for watching my review of Ghost in the Shell. If you like this video and you're not a massive racist, please give it a thumbs up. Please also consider sharing this with a friend as that would be a massive help. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to keep up with my content as I post more. Click one of the two boxes below to see one of my latest videos, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.